First, I went on the boat ride. The weather's perfect, too, thank you. This weather's so outstanding. I saw all the trees blooming. It was, it was awesome. Reminded me of Minnesota, which I guess is true. It reminds me of Minnesota. But honestly, I've had a great time here. I got in Wednesday. I uh, had an absolute blast. And just, you know, your, your people and the fans have been so nice. So nice to the fighters. So nice to myself. So nice to my coworkers. Uh, it's really been a warm welcome. So please give yourself a big round of applause and thank you for such a great welcome. <laughs> You know, we want to be worldwide, and, and coming to Sweden, as I said, is long overdue, but it's a trip that I was actually not sp supposed to be on because John Anik was supposed to do this show. John's doing The Ultimate Fighter, and then when my boss said, do you want to go to Sweden, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to go there. You know, I still haven't seen Matt Sundin. I do want to see him. I hope he's coming to the fight. Maybe Marcus Naslin will show up. I'm sure the Vancouver Canucks are saying hopefully the Sedins will show up tonight as well, but, you know, that's another topic. Um, but it's awesome to be here. There's great culture. There's great fighters. And, and the best thing about it is tomorrow night's main event not only features one of your own, but truly features one of the fastest rising stars, not just in the light heavyweight division, but one of the fastest rising stars in mixed martial arts today, Alexander the Mauler Gustafsson. I think in all we have five or six Swedes on the card. Uh, we've got a fighter from Oslo, Norway. Uh, so you're well represented tomorrow night for sure. Papi Abedi, I heard he's lifted a few weights. I think he just started working out yesterday with push-ups and sit-ups. Uh, but I'm excited to see Papi fight again. He talked about his debut against Tiago Alves. You want to talk about being thrown right into the deep end of the pool when you enter the octagon. Well, we saw enough of Papi Abedi that it should be an absolute blast when he fights tomorrow night in front of you great fans. And how about you sold out in about two hours, too? So thank you very much. We appreciate your great support. All right, this is my first time in Sweden, so I'm going to imagine for a lot of you guys, this is your first time with our Fight Club Q&A. Here's how it works. Basically, you can ask any questions to myself, to our special guest. We've got microphones set up in the stands right there. Come in, be patient. We'll get to as many questions as possible. And because this is our first time in Sweden, we've pulled out all the stops. I don't know if you've seen him yet, but he's around. The prodigy, and I believe the future Hall of Famer, Baby J. B.J. Penn. <laughs> And speaking of future Hall of Famers, this man is one of the most dominant champions in UFC history. When you talk about the true faces and the transition and the growth of mixed martial arts and the ultimate fighting championship, our special guest today is a man who without his actions in and out of the octagon, none of us would be enjoying mixed martial arts as it is. None of us would be enjoying the UFC as it is today. So take a look at my special guest. He is the one, the only, and I'm sorry, I know he's the people's champion, but to me, he will always be the Huntington Beach bad boy, Tio Ortiz! People want to see the bad guy. You know, I was the bad guy all the time. Yeah, no one in the world better than Tito Ortiz. Get used to it. I thought in my mind, why be so negative about things now? Let's change it to the people's champ. Because I'm here fighting for the people. I've made my money. I've won my world titles. Now I want to show each and every person in the world that you can achieve anything in life. The fans responded, and when Tito faced off with heavily favored Ryan Bader last July, they were squarely in his corner. The Honey Pigmeats Bad Boy, the People's Champ, Tito Ortiz! Tito Ortiz! What's up, Stockholm?
I like. I, I didn't even know that was the feature on the changing to the people's champ. That was very good. You'd think I wrote that yeah, into right. or something. Yeah, you did a good job. On but it. I can't. I can't do it. I said it. But I did say it on the air. The people's champ, but it was yeah. difficult. Cause you, you're in my heart as the Huntington Beach bad boy. We all gotta grow up, right? Yes, we do. We do. Uh, but you fine. earned that. You worked hard to get that moniker, though. Yeah, yeah. And you know, people still know what I do best. Yes, they do. And, yes, uh, they do. So you look good. You look, you look healthy. You look yeah, happy. Yeah. You know, yeah, getting, getting ready for, uh, you know, uh, what was it UFC 148 in yep. Vegas, MGM Grand, July and, 7th. Uh, maybe my last one. Yeah, you and Forrest doing it again. Yes. Why Forrest Griffin? Why was that so interesting? Um, you know, because the first fight we had, it was close. Uh, yes. I won a split decision. The second fight, I thought I won the first two rounds, and they ended up giving him the fight. So, you know, he's a big name. People want to see the third fight. So let's crush Forrest's face the third, third and last time. There you go. Well, you're used to seeing opponents more than once. I mean, you've kind of had a career of yeah. trilogies, haven't you? I, a lot of them, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I remember the olden days when you sent a message to the lion's den. I still can visualize Ken trying to jump over the cage that night. And so can you, I'm sure. Yeah, he, I was scared for you. You weren't scared. I was scared for uh, you. He had his opportunity three times. <laughs> I shut him up, but uh, that's what I do best, I guess. And yeah. you know what? I, the Ultimate Fighter that was those that was one of the best seasons. Having you guys go at it was a blast. Yeah, Ultimate Fighter was good. You know, people got to see uh, the coaching ideas that I've had. You know, of course, anybody knows. Before I was going to be a fighter, I was going to be a wrestling coach, right? Uh, school teacher, and I wanted to help out with kids. I mean, working with the youths was my main goal in life, I thought. But instead of working with 40 kids in a wrestling room, I was able to work with hundreds of thousands of kids across the world of uh, showing what hard work and dedication can achieve, and I've been doing it since. So is that maybe your future, is working in, in the coaching profession? Do you want, I know you want to stay around it, obviously. Um, I would love to stay around the UFC. I guess those questions got to be answered by Dana Lorenzo. Um, I don't know, build the next Tito Ortiz's. You know, you build go. the next superstars. I, I think I could help them do that. You know, I see a lot of fighters that don't want to do PR, they don't want to do this, and it's, why not? Yeah. Give every one of these fans the understanding of who you are and what you do and why you do it. Get in the cage and fight, and yeah, it's fun to do that. People want to know what type of person you are. So they have some type of association to uh, associate to, and I've done that same thing. I mean, I was a kid come growing up who my parents had a drug problem and uh, living in motels, living in cars. Uh, I wasn't supposed to achieve anything in life, but I show with hard work and dedication that you can't achieve anything. You know, um, through my UFC career, I've gone through some major surgeries. You know, I have an L4 5S1 in my lower back fused, fighting a year after, um, having C6, uh, C7 in my neck fused, fighting six months after. Um, Athletes and winning, don't come back. Way. Yeah, and winning. And winning. Yeah, athletes don't come back after stuff like that. And I'm, I'm very thankful. I have a, you know, a great doctor in, Colorado, in Las Vegas, uh, Dr. William Smith, who did the surgery. But I think uh, there's either God looking over me or an angel looking over me. But um, I didn't think I was going to be destined to the things I've been achieving. But, you know, um, I just want to be an inspiration to a lot of people's lives, knowing that no matter what challenges you got through life, so you can't achieve anything. Just keep your mind straight and... Don't step on anybody to get ahead and, and uh, work really, really hard. And that's what I do. I, I think you've already done all of that. Yeah. No, more, more. I got a lot more to do. I'm, I'm still that. young. I got a lot yeah. more to do. How old are you now? Uh, 37. 37. I just turned 37 Damn, in uh, January. Actually, you're getting old. Yeah. No, I've, you been, were about 13 I've been when I, You were about 13 since... when I started calling your fights. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> UFC 13. UFC uh, 13. Yeah. You, actually, you actually beat me because yeah. I came on at Ultimate Japan, UFC 15. Yeah. And it was actually Joe Rogan. I remember he interviewed me after. and He had hair then. Yeah, he actually did have hair then. And he wasn't as big as he is now. No, he was not. He was, he was, a, true, he was a true welterweight. Dude. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're standing here next to this guy. I mean, he's 205. But he was the first master understanding the way to cut weight properly and the way to come in and be bigger than your opponent. And I used to remember that in the olden days, that you would come in. People used to call be me the a cheater size because of it. And yeah. I was like, no, well, I'm no, just but smarter than Just the smarter. You did it smart. <laughs> but you were big and powerful. Yeah. But that was your game. Your game yeah. was to beat him up and, and brawl and do whatever you had to do to, to win the fight. Yeah. It was yeah. ferocity, as they say. I, yes. I come in and overwhelm people. Yep. It was funny because when me and uh, Jennifer is hooked up, uh, she was like, you don't have any cuts on your face. I'm all, I don't get hit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm always the person on top dominating. Yeah. So yeah. But I'm there's some cuts that. under there. Yeah. And no. my elbows hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, my, my elbows do yeah. hurt. Elbows Actually, hurt. still do hurt. Absolutely. Hey, this is all about you guys, so don't yes. be shy. We've got microphones on each side. Come on up, ask any questions you want. Any uh, questions, all the, the questions. The people's champ. And I guarantee Ortiz. you I can answer them. Yeah, he, he, he usually will have good answers too, so don't be shy. This gentleman's going to get us started. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I would like to know, looking back on uh, all of your fights, which one is your most favorite and which one do you think is the most important for in terms of uh, your legacy? 
You know, um, I have two of them. Uh, my number one was actually uh, beating Vanderlei Silva for the middleweight title, uh, which is light heavyweight title now. After only a year and a half of competition, I became the world champion, and I dominated against one of the brightest uh, middleweights, which light heavyweights now uh, in the world at the time. But I think, uh, oh God, I can say three of them now. Um, when I fought Vitor Belfort, and uh, he broke my nose in the first minute and 30 seconds of the fight, and I ended up pulling a decision. Um, out of the fight, and uh, he said, mountains don't make champions. Well, that night I showed him that, yeah, b being up in Big Bear in the altitude, it makes champions. But I said, I think the third and last fight uh, was against Ryan Bader. Um, everybody counted me out. Everybody said, you're not gonna be able to do it. You guarantee you're not gonna be able to do it. And then there was my family and my friends going, Tito, you're gonna crush this kid. You're gonna crush him. And I wasn't there to prove anybody wrong. I was there to prove everybody right, to knowing that I ain't going anywhere. I was here to still fight, and I'm, gonna, I'm fighting the best guys, the top of their game. I'm not getting dominated. I'm not getting knocked out unconscious. And you know, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve when I come out and fight. And when I won that fight, it was there's no energy like that ever feeling that I've ever felt in any of my fights, even winning the world title. But at the same time, you know, that next day when I woke up in the morning, and I am human. I woke up and I sat there in bed and I cried for a little bit, just a cry of joy knowing that uh, I was thankful. God gave me some gifts, and I've gone through back surgery, neck surgery, knee surgery, and I'm able to compete against young kids who are up and comers. And uh, I'm still a force to be reckoned with, and people respect that, you know, and I see a lot of people who follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, of course, and I said, you're a legend, you're a legend. You know, you're an icon of the sport. And that has always been my goal in this, uh, in this career of UFC, is trying to build this as one of the most worldwide known uh, sports around. And I think Dan and Lorenzo are making that happen for us fighters to showcase for every one of you fans. I mean, it's awesome being here in Stockholm and Sweden and just showing the respect and, you know, um, the passion that fi fans have for us fighters. And uh, it's just very nice and a very welcome thing to have. Thank you, Tito. Thank You're you welcome. for uh, the answer in all, the, all of the fights. Uh, you still got it, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, to be here in Stockholm is pretty amazing when you consider some of the cities we, you know, fighting in Casino Magic in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, and uh, <laughs> outside of Shreveport, Louisiana. I mean, we were in, Rogan and I laugh all the time. We went to some bad places for a while. Yeah, some of the places, uh, you know, in uh, Louisiana, I think there's only 1,500 people in the audience. Yeah. And, and, and they gave out most of those all, tickets. And yeah. they gave out all yeah. those tickets, and all of a sudden, they're like, all right, in the middle of the event, all right, all you guys are sitting way up there. You guys can come sit down here. Yeah. And I was like, I think I've never seen that before. Yeah, I think we said, please, so it looked yeah. better on TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? But that's the thing. That's like I said when Tito came out. This is the man who helped to bring us to where we are today. Because without people like Tito Ortiz, the Fertitas wouldn't have bought the UFC. Without you, without Chuck, without Randy Couture. Uh, obviously, Vitor Belfort was yeah. around a long time as well. Yeah. And now to see it blow up in that way, it has to give you a lot of great feelings to know that you really were part of building the foundation of what the UFC is today. And that's what I mean. I, what I really try to do is try to educate the fans, you know, right. in layman terms, where they understood where us fighters are coming from. Uh, um, you see a lot of boxers and they're guys who come off the street and they're just thugs and they just want to fight. Right. Well, no. And uh, UFC, I mean, every one of the guys, almost every one of the guys, they come from a college degree. Yep. I mean, we want to be teachers, you know, we want to be, you know, something more than just fighters. But just this fighting thing just came about is being very competitive. It's about competing against a better man, another man and seeing who the better fighter is that night. And uh, I've always been challenging myself and I've been challenging myself over Wow, 15 years now. That's crazy, yeah. And I'm still fighting here. I've never fought anywhere else. I never had an amateur career. I fought in UFC as an amateur, UFC 13. I fought uh, strictly for free because I didn't want to lose my uh, scholarship for wrestling when I was in college. Right, and right. I guess it's the love for the sport. But as years go on, you understand it's a business. And I took it as a business. And you know, I'm a businessman. I understand what hard work and dedication, you can achieve anything. And you dress well. It's uh, uh, thank you. I, I watch you dressing, so I made sure I uh, overdressed you today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and don't forget BJ Penn, Matt Hughes, a couple yeah. of the guys who helped the foundation. Yeah. Uh, question up there. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Uh, you fight against, uh, you will fight against Forrest. Uh, when is that fight going to happen? Uh, July 7th, 7th at the will MGM be, Grand. Yeah, will this be your last fight or? Yes. Oh, bro, no. It'll be my last one. Come on. You, but you, I mean, you guys got to understand there's something that one thing that none of us, and I guarantee you, none of us will ever be able to beat. It's called Father Time. As we get older, I've gone through some major surgeries, um, and I wasn't supposed to compete. I got three boys I got to take care of. Financially, they don't have to worry about anywhere for college. Um, 
I've made their future bright and financially stable through fighting. Um, it's time for me to move on. I think it's time for me to move on to something maybe different. Uh, there's just so many avenues of things I would love to attack. But these young guys that are coming up, I mean, Gustafsson, I mean, this kid's a stud. Johnny Bones Jones, I mean, these are young kids who are 22, 23, yeah, 24 years old. About 24, I mean, yeah, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not that young kid anymore. I, I, I gotta read the facts. I believe in the facts. And you know, I don't wanna hurt myself. You know, I don't wanna be that guy going there and getting knocked out. I, I ain't that type of guy. I'm very competitive. And my body starts kind of, you know, breaking down a little easier than normal. Maybe it's time for me to walk away. 15 years. I don't think there's another fighter in the world that has been fighting in the UFC for 15 years and being consecutive fighting as I have. And uh, I have some good records that I have achieved, you know, longest reigning light heavyweight champion. I've done many things. So I think it's time for this new breed to come up. And uh, if I could help out, you know, Johnny Bones Jones calls me here and there and just asks me little small things. And I, I try to, you know, lend a helping hand. I want to see fighters be successful. I ain't here to hate on anyone. I want to see them be as successful as me. But they got to understand with hard work and dedication, that stuff can happen. And, uh, yeah, it's time for me. I think it is time for me, you know. I, I want to attack me something a little different, you know. I think some theatrical stuff, doing some acting possibly. Um, you know, uh, I seen Brock go to the WWE. Yeah. Nah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe man. I, didn't. I, I like to stir up all kinds of stuff. Cause I know Dana read that. I was like, damn it, Tito, what are you doing? I, I was funny because George St. Pierre this morning was talking about being old and he's 30. Man, I'm yeah. getting old. I'm getting old. Like, you're 30, dude. Seriously. I, I've been in this game for 15 years yeah. and I was one of the guys that every single day in practice, I try to kill myself. That way, so when I fight, I've already put myself in that situation already. So with the hard work and dedication, like I say, I just. It's coming to a point, and I don't want to overstay my welcome. Okay. We just love to see you fight, so. Yeah. You'll, well, you'll, you'll get one more, but you never know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Lorenzo's we'll pockets are really, really deep, and you never know. July 7th, only <laughs> on pay-per-view. I'll pay you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give you 20 crowns, so that's it. <laughs> I think that's like two bucks. <laughs> <Is it? Yeah. laughs> Actually, it's three bucks. Three bucks, you're right. Yeah, I know. I, I figured that out at Subway the other day. All right, next question over here. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question. Even though all your injuries, how did you manage to get back? What was your strongest motivation to return? Um, my fans. Definitely. My fans and my family. I, uh, I mean, since day one, I've, I've always have been intrigued by the fans of giving the support they have. Either the people who hate me or the people who love me. But everybody always talked about me because I always did something different. And when I would get out of surgery, I mean, the worst surgery I had was I had my lower back fusion, L4, 5, S1 fused. For the first three months, I was telling myself, was, what the hell did I do to myself? I mean, I'd come out of bed with tears in my eyes and pain of just like, I didn't think I was gonna come back and fight again. But then that third month, like week by week, it just got better and better and better. And I was like, all right, I gotta start thinking more positive on things. And I said, what made me get through that stuff was the fans, the people who got on Twitter or on my Facebook or going to punishment.com and going, Tito, man, you could do this, you can get through this. Just show us how strong you are. And I think that's being an inspiration in people's life, knowing that you know you could get through these major surgeries just as long as you keep your, your, your head on your shoulders and stay positive about things. You know, when you start believing that you can't do it, you'll never do it. When you start believing you can do it, the sky's the limit. Thanks he, so much. He was an inspiration to me, too, about a week before my back surgery and last August, same surgeon, Dr. William Smith. I said, what am I in for? He goes, oh, this is going to be the worst experience of your life, Goldie. Your life is going to suck. You're going to be in so much pain. You're not going to be able to walk. I'm like, dude, you're, this is supposed to be a pep talk. This is supposed to be, this is a great decision, Goldie. You're going to feel better. So I told Dr. Smith that. He's like, Tito, from what I heard, you had had your surgery, and about two days later, they caught you running on a treadmill or something. No, no, no. That's no, what no, I heard. No, no. Allegedly. No, no, no. All right, walking briskly. I walking up and down the stairs. I, all right, and all I, right. Yeah. Actually, I almost he's fell. Sc he scared the living heck out of me, though. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I, I was walking in there like for this. the worst. Yes, you did. And the and best it, did happen. And it did indeed. Yes, Thank you. Good. Because I was <laughs> definitely scared. Next question over here. Hi, Tito. Uh, I have a two-part question for you. Uh, first of all, if you retire, which I don't hope, uh, which matchup would you uh, do for a comeback like Randy did uh, we, we, against which fighter? And also, if you retire, do you think you will have a similar offer as Chuck Liddell did to manage the company with some big jobs? Um, you and know, would you take it? I, 
I, those are going to share an office with Dana, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be wonderful. <laughs> I, don't know. I still got to build that bridge still. Uh, you know, uh, that last question, that's a, a question I guess Dana and Lorenzo could answer. Would um, you do it? I would I do mean, it. You, I would love to do it. Is the beef I, gone? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, and I know he thinks so. And, but I still got to build that bridge. Uh, you know, I, I said a lot of things that I did on Complete Emotions. I'm a very emotional man. Um, but at the same time, I, I look at it as, you know, um, what would be the next step? Something that keeps my interest. Something that I'm going to love to do. You know, fighting, I've been loving it for so long. I kind of get burned out a little bit of it. You know, going in the gym six days a week, six to eight hours a day. That grind, it, you know, I got three little boys and I don't want to miss them growing up. You know, I'm in camp for three months, three times a year. That's nine months out of the year that I'm not home. And uh, I love my kids. I want to make sure that my kids have a father there for them. Like, I never had a father. And, uh, and I think, you know, if I get a job with the UFC, it would be awesome. But uh, something I'm going to do, I guarantee you, it's going to be a part of UFC or a part of mixed martial arts, and uh, the fans still want me to see here. I mean, either that is uh, kind of teaching other fighters coming up of making a brand of themselves, um, you know, being exciting for the fans, not just in the octagon, but outside the octagon. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, I, I'm a huge supporter of our troops in the United States, and uh, I try to make it over to Iraq, and thank God the war is almost over, so now we ain't got to do that anymore. And the first question, who would you fight if you return? If I fought, I haven't even got past the first F. I don't think I'm gonna. <laughs> I, it's just right now I'm thinking about just Forrest Griffin, you know. Uh, July 7th, uh, if I came back, you know, I, I think Danny get pissed if I said the guy's name, but you guys probably know the guy's name, but he won't come out of retirement either. But uh, Make him. I, you can't make anybody do anything. Yeah, you can. Call him a bitch. <laughs> no, that's the old bad boy image. Come on. No, that's, that's the Huntington that's, Beach that's, bad that's, boy. We're now dealing old, with the people's I'm growing up. I'm a man now. now. I'm, like, I'm not that punk little kid that's trying to sell pay-per-view. I don't need to do that. My name sells pay-per-view. I call a him a bitch. <laughs> well, you're probably not standing next to him either. <laughs> no, he's one, of the great, he's one of the greatest light heavyweight champs himself in his own right. And, uh, you know, me and him were buddies. And um, he sold out. And it's cool. It is what it is. I... I, I no more than that, you know? Thank sure. you, Tito. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Man. It took a lot longer to mention his name than I thought it would. I never mentioned his every name. Time I, exactly. But every time I do a Q&A with him, <laughs> it doesn't take long to mention your name. Yeah, it's right. interesting how <laughs> I see you guys in like a Rocky Apollo Creed moment, just in a gym, just locked right. away one day, just settle the score on Should I ring the bell? Yeah. Ding, ding. Let's go. Ding, ding. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Next question over here, please. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tito. Uh, I'm wondering what your three favorite submissions are. Three favorite submissions, uh, triangle, guillotine, and uh, probably a hill hook. I do, I do pretty good hill hooks. But I mean, I'm, like I say, if people understand, they go, Tito, why don't you submit more people when you fight? I want to brutalize someone I'm in the cage. I don't want to get a submission. The guy goes, damn, he got lucky. He caught me in that submission. I want to pound the guy through, ground and pound, elbows, and just try to end their careers. That's what I try to do. I, uh, I mean, I, I, kind of. I, I, I'm, I'm not a guy to be a fancy submission artist. I'm in there to, to put on a show for each and one of you guys. You guys pay big dollars for the front row tickets and for the pay-per-view, and I want to make sure that you guys are getting the full 15 minutes of a fight out of it. That's what I try to do. And a follow-up question to that. Uh, how close was that uh, triangle on Lyoto Mishida? It was so close, I heard him gargle. Okay. <laughs> I heard him gargle. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, actually, I popped his arm, too. Um, he's tough, man. He's, I made a little mistake in, in training. I don't ever make these mistakes again. Um, I switched from triangle to iron bar, which I should have just kept to the triangle. And you learn from the mistakes. And, you know, um, he went on to win the world title. So it looks like I'm not losing the guys who are chumps, huh? Through mm. <laughs> that. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you very much. You know, when, and you talked about it earlier, Tito. You look at the list of the guys you fought during your downtime, you know, when you were a couple of years without a win, though. There was not, I mean, they were all current or future or past champions at one weight or another. I mean, you were going through a who's who's list. Then comes Ryan Bader, who, you know, had lost to the champion John Jones. He's looking for a little redemption, and you take care of him. Then you fight the guy who's fighting for the title a week from tomorrow on Rashad Evans. I mean, it was never it was always a, up here. Here, always I, up. I here. think I had one easy fight, and uh, that was UFC my, 13. UFC 13. Yeah. <laughs> and from that point out on, it was like I had a mark on my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to fight that guy. And all of a sudden, I watch on everyone's pay per views like I want to fight Tito Ortiz. I want to fight Tito Ortiz. Like who in the hell is that guy? Yeah. I, it's, it's, I guess it's a. 
Respect value, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the reasons why you're standing where you are today. Yeah, right. Next question over here, please. Hey, Tito. I got two questions for you. Uh, first off, I've been following you on Twitter, uh, seeing that you're enjoying Stockholm. And I also see that you got two tickets left for, for the event for tomorrow. So how can I get my hands on those tickets? <laughs> That's a legit question, all right? That's a really good question. You know what? You're the first person that actually has asked me that question, so you get the two tickets. Wow, and he doesn't even have to go to Will Call. How good is that? You gotta make sure you Twitter about it. See, there's a, there's a man who's been following me on Twitter That's and watches what, what I do about, and what see? I say. You do your homework, you do your research, you are There you go, it. bam. Thank What's you. your name, man? Thomas. Thomas. Congratulations, Thomas. Hope you enjoy the fights tomorrow. Thanks. Right on. I have another question, though. Yep. Okay, now you're asking a little too much. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you know no, what? No, no. No, go, Why go not? Go ahead. Uh, I'm actually thinking about, you fought Rashad Evans twice, right? Yep. And he's going to fight for, for the championship now in a couple of weeks' time. What's your take on that fight? Um, I don't think he'll make it out of the third round against uh, John Jones. Mm. I really don't. I, John Jones is a different species. I mean, not in human, just fighter in general. Long, 6'5", reach 86 inches, 80, I believe. 84 and a half. 84 and, and a half. And shot 74. I, the last time I checked, that's a foot. He's a, he's a college wrestler. Like a he got here, great takedown yeah. defense. His Muay Thai is ridiculous. Uh, I'm not awesome. sure about his, his uh, strength, but you know, when I fought Rashad, he was strong. The first time I fought him, he was weak. The second time, it, he put in 14 week camp, and it, it showed. Um, I almost caught him in a guillotine <laughs> after only 10 days of training, but I, it's behind me now. It's okay. But uh, <laughs> I hate losing. I, that's, that's just me. Um, but I, I think John Jones will pick him apart. I really do. Thank you. Right on. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Next question, go ahead, please. Hi, Tito. Uh, my name is Emil. Uh, I'm a fighter too, trying to be. Right on. <laughs> so I was wondering, you said you were trying to kill yourself in training every day. And could you take us through a week of training in, uh, like, before your next fight, for example? Well, you know, the first 10 years, I was trying to kill myself. But then I started talking to Randy Couture. He's like, you got to do less, but quality in quantity and as my body got starting tearing down you know I got ACL replacement you know L45 S1 fuse C6 C7 fused uh, and I realized putting in the right type of training is really really smart um, but just go through a, a training session that I would usually do I mean I get up around 12 o'clock in the afternoon um, go on about a four mile run come back have a small meal we uh, go back and we do our Muay Thai and boxing uh, for about two hours, you know, we probably try to put in about eight rounds, eight five-minute rounds, a 30-second rest. Uh, come back, have another small meal, go back, we do our uh, wrestling jiu-jitsu for about two and a half hours. We do five five-minute rounds with 30-second rest. And at that, I'm doing this in altitude. I'm doing this at 7,500 feet of altitude, which is two, almost two miles. Um, it's hard. Uh, it's very challenging, but it's what I put in my body, you know. My body's a machine, and I want to fine-tune fine that oil machine, and it's what you put into it is what you get out of it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I take it day by day. I don't think about, oh, it's Monday today, and I got until Saturday. No, I just think about Monday. Monday's done. Cool. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm going to push myself harder that day. And each day, just, just take it day by day. You know, don't overwhelm yourself by thinking about the whole, you know, three-month camp. Yeah. Um, I try to just take it day by day. Okay. Thank you. Hold right on. That and watch a lot of videos. Yeah. Uh, Visualization is huge for me. I learned that in college. Visualize and you can achieve anything. I mean, I put, before the fight even starts, I mean, I put myself walking out, putting inside the cage, step in front of the guy, first punch thrown, all the way to my hand getting raised. Every one of my fights, because I visualize. Visualization is a very, very big thing. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Next one over here. Now we got it rolling. Hey, Tito. Hi, Goldie. How are you, buddy? Great. First of all, uh, I would like to say it's awesome that you're here. I would like to say it's awesome that UFC has come to Sweden. Um, yeah. 
Um, as for my question, I would like to know, uh, would you like to see your kids growing up fighting or, you know, going to college and university and doing other stuff? Well, this is my, well, my goal. This is the deal that I have between my son. I have a son who's uh, nine years old and I have two twins who are three. The nine-year-old, Jacob, uh, he actually is in wrestling already. Um, he won the state title in Arizona last year and uh, he comes to my gym and trains with me. I get to see him, you know, twice, three times a month. Uh, and he's, Dad, I want to be a UFC fighter. I go, Jacob, what's our deal? So I know, I know, I know. I got to get my master's degree first. <laughs> exactly. I, I work so hard for my family that I'm able to f afford to go any college that he wants to go to. He wants to go to Harvard, he wants to go to Stanford, wherever he wants to go. I'm going to do it for him, but hopefully by the time he gets his master's degree, he's about 24 years old and he's like, damn, I'm too damn smart to be a fighter now. <laughs> so maybe he'll be an attorney or a management, you never know. <laughs> I, I just, I've worked really, really hard in this game and it's very physically and emotionally tormenting. It's torture. It's like a legal way of torture that we get paid for, <laughs> but it's fun. Thanks, Tito. Right on. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next one over here. Go ahead, bud. Hello, Tito. So, Do you think that Kenny Shamrock deserved to be in the cage with you three times? And also, is it true that your second fight saved the US, UFC from bankruptcy? Um, I don't know about saving them for bankruptcy. Um, no. It's kind of different when you have more money than God <laughs> to go bankrupt. Um, were we Zufa when you fought him the second time? Just a rumor. Uh, when I fought the second time? Um, yeah, no. Actually, still SCG? I was still SCG. So you might have. My fourth fight is when 2001 is when they first bought the company. Right, right. I've been fighting since 97. Yeah, so your, um, Ken, so your Ken fights were under the uh, Zufa. All right, McKen's fights were under Zufa. Okay. And uh, the first fight, yes, I think it was mandatory that me and him fought. We had some bad blood against each other. We did the ultimate fighter, and he couldn't keep his mouth shut. And I was trying to be the more respectful man, and I told him, let's be coaches, and let's let the best man win, our best coach win, and I crushed him 9-3. to um, Then he just thought he would get under my skin, and I don't think there's another person in this world that's easier to push a button and watch him turn redder and redder and redder and redder. It was like he was going to explode. Um, <laughs> after that fight, I stopped him. I think it was in 134 in the first round. Uh, the third fight should have never happened. But Dana said it's going to be on free TV. The fans didn't have to pay for it. Ah, the hell with it. Let's do it. And Did, uh, did you squash the beef? Yeah, you know, I, I think I did. Three times. Yeah, three <laughs> times I squashed the beef. No. <laughs> I, uh, this is a, it's, it's, it's mental warfare. When you're competing against another man, and you guys got to understand, you know, the bad damage that I had, it was never against any of the fans. It was against the guy who I was fighting. I was trying to get into his brain and manipulate and just psychologist, I mean, I went to college, I mean, I took psychology 101, and you could pick a person's brain, and if you could beat them mentally before the fight even starts, half the battle's already won. And that's all I did, I was just trying to manipulate guys, just try to get them saying stuff, and everything I said was the truth. You know, I talked to Chel Sonnen when he first started uh, with Anderson Silva, and I said, if you speak the truth, it'll speak louder than any other word. So it's your fault? Yeah, it's my fault. No, it's not my so fault. So you created that animal. No. He's, so it's your fault. He had it in I him. I knew it. He, he well, obviously he had it in him. No, he does it great. He does I told it him, better than great. He's, don't he, back off yeah. on it. Keep it up. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's your fault. Yeah. So we are all uh, in bulletproof vehicles yeah, in Brazil because people, of you. Know, people know who Chelsea is, right? He's a great fighter. <laughs> yes, they do. He's a great fighter. So the interesting thing is you talk about Ken. Ken did that though. Ken was very good in his day in mental warfare as well. Yes. So you were the young breed of a Ken Shamrock. Yeah. I know you'll say I better fighters had to push his buttons, but, like yeah. I said. <laughs> but that was his mo too. Yeah. Because they used to talk about the lion's den in the olden days and how he and would have the everybody. Fans the fans want something to treat, right. something to stick on. It was like, wow, did he really just say that? Yeah. And when, hey, yeah, it's a talk game, but you know, talking's cheap unless you can back it up. You know, and I backed it up many a times, you know, being the world champion in light heavy division, defending as many times as I did, I was able to talk smack, and I was able to back it up. You know, there's fans and fighters who didn't like me because of it, but hey, too bad they're not me. But I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun along the way.
<laughs> we could just have Rampage and Rashad talk for the next three years. They don't have to fight again. <laughs> yeah, right. That was some of the best back yeah, especially in Rampage. history. And people understand, oh, Rampage, Rampage was a part of Team Punishment. Yeah. Me and him would be in Big Bear in camp, and we would just demoralize each other. And I mean, Team <laughs> Punishment, it wasn't because we're trained. It was mental Team Punishment. I mean, we would just bag on each other so much. I mean, Rico Rodriguez, who was a heavyweight champ uh, back in the day, he actually left the mountain. He couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> we would manipulate and pick him apart so much. He was like, fuck you guys, man. I'm going home. <laughs> he ended up coming back like a week later. But it, 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 it's one of those things. In a fight, you got to be mentally strong. Yeah. And it's just one of those things, man. You got to learn. It, it's not just a fight. It's mental. Your brain's very, very strong. And if you're able to capacitate those things and suck them in and just get past it, it makes you that much stronger. And also, Mike, go Bruins. Ah, uh, go Bruins. I don't know, really. <laughs> Seriously. Let me think of this. the other uh, 15, uh, yeah, 15 teams in the playoffs I like better than the Bruins. Yeah, all of those. No, I think the Stanley Cup is going to be uh, the New York Rangers and the San Jose Sharks. That's my pick right there. So if anybody doesn't like it, you got Henrik Lundqvist, one of the best goalies in the NHL, obviously, right? <laughs> Auntie Niemi for the Sharks. It's a great matchup. Uh, and the Bruins will not repeat this year, even though Tim Thomas is a fine American. Next question over here. Hello, uh, Tito and... Uh, uh, you call me Goldie, Mike. <laughs> Mark, you call me Joe. You no, know, no, no, call no. me Buff. Whatever, it's cool. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know your name either, so we're good. We're good. <laughs> we're even, we're even. No, I'm sorry. But uh, welcome to Stockholm. And uh, I just I have two questions. Uh, one... <coughs> Uh, the pressure you feel when you say it is your last fight, uh, is it like, uh, is it more or is it, uh, or is it, is it relieving to say it is, is it, it is your last fight or is it more pressure because you want to finish in a, in a good way? Like, um, it's not a good feeling knowing that's my last fight. I mean, I wish I could fight until I'm 80 years old. And I think the fans would love to watch me fight until I'm 80 years old, but as I get older, <laughs> um, I haven't really thought about it that much. I just been thinking about, you know, um, camp, getting ready for this fight, and when the fight's said and done, I get my hand raised, my decision will be made. But right now, my decision is, I, I want to do other things. I want to do something else uh, that I'm still in love with, you know, something that I have a passion for. And fighting has been a, a, my lifestyle. It hasn't just been a job. It's been a lifestyle to me. I mean, it's, I get to understand. I get up every day when I walk out of my house, I got to put a smile on. Fans come up to you, Tito, can I take a picture with you? It's like, yeah, of course. I I'm there for the fans. I always do it. The only time I don't do things like that is with my kids. So with my kids, like with my, my children, please let me have my time. Um, but to me, th this is my life. Ultimate Fighting Championship is my life. That's why I never fought anywhere else. I've always understood of, I wanted to make my name here. I wanted to make my name a household name. I wanted to be an icon of the sport. You know, I look at other sports and in boxing, they had Muhammad Ali. Professional wrestling had Hulk Hogan. UFC has Tito Ortiz. Uh, good luck against Forrest Griffin. I don't, and, thank uh, you. Homie, I know your name now, Michael Goldberg. I Correct, <laughs> good, good. As good. the guy What's behind your name? told him that. Dishad, Dishad Ali. From Dishad Dubai. Ali, nice yeah. to meet you, buddy. Bye -bye. Nice to meet you, thank you. Um, can you imagine you're walking at 80 years old, though? Me no. and Rogan would be like out of breath. Uh, uh, hopefully by Tito, then, I'll, Tito's coming into the octagon. You'd be jumping like this instead, of like you usually uh, do. Hopefully then I'll be watching on pay-per-view on my own private island. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. That's Very my nice. goal. I might life. be sitting right next to you. Yeah. Right. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Next question over here. Go ahead, sir. Why, hello, Tito. Why, hello, Michael Goldberg. Hello, hello. Let me just start off by saying I hope you fuck Forrest Griffin up because I hate him and I love you. And now to my question: Cheers. You make fine T-shirts, as you see, I'm wearing one right now. What made you create Punishment Athletics and get into clothing line? Well, um, of course, being in Orange County, California, uh, t-shirt brands were made up all over. Um, a fan came up to me at UFC 19. I was 19, I think, at UFC 19. And it was a little kid, he's like, Tito, Tito, you got a shirt or anything with your name on it? And so I could sign, I, I mean, I could have for memorabilia? I was like, no. I was like, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. I went back home, my brother Marty, he's like, man, the punishment you learned, that guy was sick. I go, what? He goes, man, you punished that guy. I go, hmm, I wonder if I put punishment on a shirt and put TitoOrtiz.com underneath the shirt. I can make something out of it. $500 I invested in turned to 1,000, turned into 2,000, turned into 4,000, 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, and now it's a multi-million dollar company. But it's been strictly all my stuff. I, I approve everything, I come up with the designs. I mean, I have about 90% of 
everything that goes into the brand. And I don't want my stuff to fall apart. It's not stuff, as you say, you wash it once and all of a sudden it falls apart, so the designs go away. I mean, I can't count how many times I've gone to companies and return stuff going, I don't want this, it's not good enough. You guys need to make it better. And it's stuff, like I say, I wear suits and I wear punishment. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I had some punishment gear way back in the day. Yeah. And then I got I cut off. your box, right? You do owe me a box. Yeah. I owe you a box. Yeah, because Bubba tricked me. I never said that about you. I love you. <laughs> Next question over. He got mad at me one time because they did this interview a long time ago. Bubba the Love Sponge, and he's crafty, and it was edited. So they asked me about six times, here. six or seven times, they asked me about Tito and Chuck. Tito and Chuck. And I said, Tito's going to want to take him down and beat him up. Tito is one of my favorite fighters. Tito can beat Chuck. Tito, this is going to be a great fight. And it went on and on and on. And he asked, so what, what do you? What if they stand up? I go, well, I don't think that that's Tito's first choice, but yeah. So what you're saying is if he stands with him, he's going to get his ass knocked out. And I go, yeah, whatever. Well, then Tito was on the radio show the next day, and guess what part of the interview they played for him? Just that part of him saying Just me saying ass. that. I'm like, and then he's like, like, dude, I'm not sending you any more punishment gear. You ain't getting <laughs> shit. You're cut off. <laughs> so I've just been burned. It's not what I now said. Now it's rebuilt, and yes. I'll send you We're back together. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. I'm an extra large, by the All way. All right, cool. Next question over here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, Tito. I would like to know who your favorite fighter in the UFC from Scandinavia is and why. Um, wow. Some of the guys are just so new. I mean, this uh, Gustafson kid, I've watched him. I watched a few of his tapes. So it might have been someone I was possibly a fought. And, um, I think he's the next one of the next rising stars. I think at least. Uh, he has everything. He has the length. He has the height. He has the strength. Takedown defense. Great striker. Um, he's never had an opportunity to be on his back that I've seen at least. Uh, but he's, he's pretty vicious. So I know this is a, a big mark for him. If he could take out Thiago Silva, you never know. He'd be fighting for a world title. Two guys are 6'5 fighting each other. That'd be nice to see. Yeah. Size, age, physically, mentally, that, that's, uh, youth. that could be a youth, absolutely. That could be a matchup that would be very intriguing. Uh, how would you compare him to Martin Kampmann? He's Martin way Cam taller. Yeah, way taller, a lot heavier. Martin Kampmann, though, I mean, he's a kid who's came around also. Dude. Gosh, he's gotten so much better so quick. Um, it's, it's just nice to see across the globe that there's always a great guy from that country. And those two guys are biggest names here. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Martin Campman is a fun guy to watch. He's yeah, always he in a great fight. He's been he's with Brandon better, forever. He gets better on the ground. Yeah. I mean, his submissions yeah. and stuff. It's like, wow, impressive. He is, he is Denmark's finest, for sure. Yeah. And, and, I mean, Tiago Alves was handed it to him. And then for him to pull off that submission in the third round was sick. That's what MMA is so great about. Yeah, you never yeah. know who's going to win. Someone yeah. can be getting his ass kicked and all of a sudden get choked out. You're like, wow, how did that happen? Pitbull's <laughs> a little angry about going for that last takedown <laughs> still. Next question over here, please. What's up, Tito, Mike? Up? I you? have uh, two questions for you, Tito. The first one was, have you ever been surprised how easily you've just demolished an opponent? And the second one was, have you ever been kind of scared going into a fight and not basically doubting your own capabilities to demolish that opponent? Um, I'm, a, I'm afraid in every one of my fights. If there's a fighter that says he's not afraid, he's lying. But by the time I walk into the cage, the fear's gone. People can understand, every time I, I come out to a fight, and you, some will see it, say me and I see it, there's tears coming down my eyes. And it's not tears of pain, it's tears of the fear leaving my body. So when I step in the cage, no more fear. It's gone. And it's just one of those things that uh, I'm human. I have emotions. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a more emotional than anybody I think in the UFC there is. And I think that's why fans find intrigue to me. They find a relation of knowing that, you know, I came from nothing and I achieved a lot and I work super, super hard. So when I do step in the cage, there's fear there. Of course there's fear there. But uh, I, I don't mistake it with doubt. I try not to doubt myself. But there's other, there's other times that I've fought injured that I probably should have never fought. But I fought because I had to support my family. I fought because I didn't want to let down the fans. I didn't want to let down the UFC. But people said, oh, here goes Tito with his excuses again. It's like, I'm human. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to tell you the truth of how things are. You know, and I'm here to sell fights. And when I go and I step in, injured or not, I'm going to give a fight 100%. Uh, uh, I, Go out on my battle shield, man. I'm going in as a warrior. I'm a modern day gladiator, and my goal is to entertain each and every one of you guys. And as the, just the, just the first one, have you ever been surprised how easily you just rip through someone? Yeah, well, um, the late Evan Tanner, when I fought him, um, I was up to Big Bear for the first time in my career, and uh, I was up there for eight weeks, which was hell. Um, I had our own cook, didn't have no salt. Um, 
no junk food. I ate very, very clean. And I trained my butt off. I mean, I remember just running four miles. I mean, tra training at altitude, there's nothing like it. And I remember picking him up and slamming him and him feeling so weak that it was over. I like surprised myself. It was like, <sighs> what do I do with all this energy now? I just trained for eight, mo or eight weeks in camp and it lasted 30 seconds. It, yes, you do get surprised by how easy it was. I mean, when I picked apart uh, Ken Shamrock, I was afraid. I was like, man, it's the world's most dangerous man. <laughs> I made him look like a girl. It was just like, <laughs> I go, does this really get this easy? But there's, there's a lot of fights that are tough and challenging, you know? I fought Vitor Belfort. He broke my nose in the first minute and a half. And I remember get, finally getting the takedown and being on top of him and just watching blood just drop on his face. I was like, oh shit, I'm cut. So I just started throwing elbows. Hopefully the referee would pull me off him. He pulled me off, pulled me in the corner, and my trainer at the time, Saul Solis, looked at me and goes, ah, you're all right. And then Ricardo, or not Ricardo, uh, uh, who was it? Um, I forget one of the guys who was in my corner, and he actually looked at me, he was like, holy shit. He was like, shut up. It was actually Rico Rodriguez, and he was like, holy shit. I could see Rico. Yeah, yeah. he was like, yeah. Saul, shut up. Dude, you're a man. Uh, you're, you're a mess, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, Pulling off small things like that, knowing that you're able to get through those things, it just shows how strong your mind can really be. And when it's all said and done, there's the easy ones, there's the hard ones, but the hardest thing is training. The fights are fun, fights are easy. People say, do you feel pain during the fights? Nah, it's all dull pain. Um, the training was hard. If you prepare yourself the right way in training, the fight should be easy. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, we got a time for a couple more. First of all, Mike, I want to say that you and Joe, the partnership is the best in commentating in sports. Thank you period. very much. Thank you. That's, yes, that's nice. Are. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a lot of fun. Tito, I got to meet you yesterday. Absolute honor meeting UFC royalty. Um, one of my most favorite moments was UFC 40 press conference, you and Ken Shamrock. When <laughs> you laughed at Ken, he kicked the chair up in the air and Dana White shit himself. <laughs> no, no, he really did. Yeah, I, no. think, I think that's the yeah. moment when Dana says, I got to bulk up. <laughs> but what I want to know, and I apologize if you've answered this question a lot of times already, but I just want to hear your version of it. I want to know what really happened. UFC 38 in London, out in the alley, the Lee Murray story. I want to hear your, your version of it, because I've heard so many versions. I want to hear from you yourself. Well, I, I was there. I, uh, Lee Murray is a part of the Mafia, so I'll leave it at that. I won't answer it. <laughs> yeah. Not even about Chuck back against the wall, knocking boys out left, right. Yeah, it was me and Chuck. Chuck was funny it that was night. It was me and Chuck yeah. and my friend yeah. Damien and my other friend yeah. Bo who got sucker punched. And uh, it was seemed like us against the world. And I don't know, when one of the cops came up to me and says, Tito, you better stop. I'm spraying you with maze. I'm like, fucking spray me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, wa my wife said to Chuck, because Chuck was all, he was all fired up. My wife said to Chuck, your career, your career. He's like, this is my career. And he just went out. He knocked about four more people out. So you're going to get Chuck? No, this is my. He's like, I haven't had this much fun since high school. <laughs> and then that actually was back when me and Chuck weren't friends. Or no, were we friends? Oh, no, I. I don't know. He he likes so I, 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 I think you guys coaster. were then. He had your yeah, back. He had yeah, he had yeah, somebody. No. He had a lot I of like people. I love Chuck, back. man. I want to see yeah. the success for him. And I've always been like that. And the paint, the pictures are painted a little different than the truth. Yeah. But people could yeah. see through the truth. And hey, it is what it is. That's good, cool, man. Thanks for your time. I don't mind. Cheers. All right. Cool. All right. We got time for uh, two more. I apologize. We got to get to this gentleman because he's got the proper shirt on. Yes, sir. So we'll go here and we'll go there. I apologize, guys. Uh, official weigh-ins are at 4 o'clock. Uh, UFC merchandise is available. Uh, we've got some great stuff. Jeff Wynn and his crew are here. So uh, grab some UFC merchandise. Thank you very much. I also am going to announce the winner of the Fight Club uh, in a second. But we'll fire off these two last questions and then we'll get ready for the weigh-ins. Go ahead, please. Hi Tito. Hi uh, Mike. Nice to see you. Um, first off, I just want to thank you, Tito, for um, for your inspiration to me, because uh, I started my MMA career with you as an inspiration, and uh, I've done that for five to six years with a lot of back problems. So I had you as an inspiration there too. Now I have my own uh, MMA club with over nice. 200 members. Wow, that's awesome! Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> My question is, uh, will we see the, the grave digger uh, with Forrest? You never know. I know. I told we you saw it with Vader. Vader. I, 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 it's just when you have that excitement and that just that, God, you can't explain the feeling. There's nothing like it. Yeah, possibly. I, I want to see so. it. I, For the last time. For the fans. 
Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I gotta win first, though. I don't count no chickens before they hatch. You gotta win first. See, the people's champ doesn't do that. Yeah, Just the Huntington yeah, Beach yeah, bad boy no, does that. No, oh, by the no, way. No, no, no. Can I call you Huntington Beach bad boy that night, please? <laughs> Come on, seriously. Yeah. You can't change it. You're not allowed. I'm not a boy anymore, man. I'm it's a trademark. Come on. <laughs> the people's Huntington Beach bad boy. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck uh, with your thanks, club. Man. That's awesome. Good luck. Awesome. Final question over here and a fine shirt you're wearing. Yeah, that's a beautiful shirt right there. Uh, I have two questions for you. You can have more than that if you want because you're wearing a punishment shirt. <laughs> uh, who was the toughest opponent you faced and pulled off the win? Um, toughest one had to be Randy Couture. You know, when I, when I lost my world title. Um, every round, it felt like I was digging the hole deeper and I couldn't get out of it. It was just the position he had, and I counted my chickens before the hatch. I was like, ah, this 40-year-old man ain't beating me no possible way. <laughs> being a little too confident. Um, and he beat me fair and square. Uh, and I would have to say that was probably one of the losses that I took the hardest. When you lose a world title and you're on the top of the world, and literally when you're on top of the world, then all of a sudden, before the fight, there's 20 guys in your dressing room. Then you lose your world title, and you go back to the room, there's only two guys in your dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how human nature is. Yeah. They're around you when you're on top of the world, but when you're at the bottom of the barrel, they want nothing to do with you, and you find who your true friends are. And that night I did. And uh, you know, I look at it, like I say, um, I keep my friends, good friends, very, very close to me, and my e enemies even closer. <laughs> ah, that's the way it is. Uh, last question. Do you like the hair? Yeah, right? I lo love the hair and I love the shirt, too. <laughs> Do you want to feel it? Yeah, right? Oh, he wants to feel, feel it feel so it. badly. Feel yeah, it. yeah, please. Well, you must have a lot of, yeah, lot of depth awesome. in it. <laughs> no, I was kidding, seriously. <laughs> but thank you. He, it's if up I was to a Tito. chick, I would like to touch your hair, but I'm, not, I'm, cool with, I'm, cool. I'm cool with that. I, I can still say you have a wonderful T-shirt on, though. And, of course, if you guys want to get any T-shirts just like that, you can go to punishment.com. Okay, and of course, go to ufcstore.com and get yes. your UFC merchandise out yep. there. And I want to uh, I want to award the Fight Club winner, uh, this gentleman. Sorry, women, but you did not win this one. This uh, man and a guest will be able to get a VIP backstage tour tomorrow night for UFC Fight Night Ooh. here in Stockholm, Sweden. And congratulations goes to John Lawrenson. Is John here, John Lawrenson. John. Okay, nobody's really happy for John, are they? Anyway, John has to see Bob. Where's Bob? All right, Bob's right there. John, come see Bob. Congratulations. Big round of applause for the future Hall of Famer, the people's champ, Tito Ortiz. Thank you, Stockholm. I appreciate it. Thank you, Stockholm. Official weigh-ins in an hour. Thank you very much. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.